Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I got a good one for you. I'm going to show you how to bring the power of ChatGPT to Microsoft Access using OpenAI's API. That's basically an application programming interface that you can use over the web so you can send data directly from your database to ChatGPT, have it do some stuff like hey, correct this for spelling and grammar and add punctuation, that kind of thing, and then bring it back to your Access database with one click and boom, there it is. You've got AI-powered database technology. All right, you ready? Here we go. Before we get started, prerequisite time. If you have not yet watched my web API video, go watch this. We're gonna use all the code in this video to talk to ChatGPT's OpenAI, okay? If you haven't finished this, go watch this now and then come on back. I'll wait for you. And of course, this is a developer level video, so it's gonna require a bunch of VB code. So if you haven't learned how to program in VB yet, go watch my intro to VBA video before that video and then come on back. We are also going to need my find between function because OpenAI is gonna reply with a JSON string like that. And we're gonna to have to use my find between to locate the text that we want to pull out of there to make it usable. Okay, so go watch this video too. And gold members, of course, all of this code is in the code vault and you can download those other databases. If you are not familiar with OpenAI, it is the company behind ChatGPT. And if you're not sure what ChatGPT is, then you've been living under a rock for the last six months. ChatGPT is basically conversational AI that you can ask it a question like, tell me why Rush is the greatest rock band of all time, and it will answer you as if you're talking to another person. And you can take this level of sophistication and put this in your access database with not too much work. And now I just got to see why they, what, what it finishes up here. I'm, I'm liking it so far. And yes, musical tastes are subjective, but Rush is the greatest rock band of all time. Anyways, so OpenAI has an API, an application programming interface that you can use to query their AI engine, basically kind of like you're talking to ChatGPT. And you can use this from simple things like you can, if you, uh, let's say you use your access database as a letter writer, like I do. I use it to write my customer service correspondence. Um, and I voice dictate a lot of stuff, so I don't I don't bother to say period and put you know exclamation points in. But you can just freeform you know say the words into your access database and then click a button and it will send it to API right. Send it to the OpenAI. It'll correct it for spelling and grammar. That's the example I'm going to use in today's video, and then send it back to you and put it back in your notes field. So that and that's just one example. You can send it a list of the fields in your table and say write me an SQL statement to do blah, and it will write a query for you. That kind of stuff. Now I am gonna tell you guys up front, this will require a paid account at OpenAPI. All right, you have to get an API key, which requires setting up a paid account with a credit card. I will tell you though, it's very inexpensive. I have been playing with this for the past couple of months, like a lot, and using it for my own business for, like I said, customer service correspondence. And I think over the past two months, I've racked up maybe $3 in charges, and that's using a, a ton of it. So it's extremely inexpensive, but you will need a paid account. So if you're not willing to do that, then the rest of this video is not for you. I do believe they offer you a little bit of free credit before you actually have to sign up with your credit card, but don't quote me because they may change this in the future. So you can, you can try setting up an account without a credit card and you might get a little bit of usage, but it's, it's cheap guys, trust me. So let's go ahead and set up that account on openai.com. Go to openai.com. I'll put a link to it down below for you. Go under their API. And here's where you can play with ChatGPT, by the way. Play with this first if you haven't played with ChatGPT yet and get a feel for it, for how it works and what it can do. Okay? Come over here to Overview. And of course, uh, it's currently October of 2023. They may change their website and their interface in the, in the future. So uh, I, don't hold me accountable for that. I'll try to update the video if they make major changes. But go to Overview and then come down to get started. And it's gonna ask you to sign up. Oh, I already have another account, but I'm gonna sign up a new account for you guys. So I'm gonna continue with Google. I'll use my secondary account here, create a new account. All right, I don't know why they want your age, but type in your age. I'm not telling you guys. And then of course your phone number. They're gonna text you a little code, type in the code. 
All right, now you're on their OpenAI platform screen. Come over here to your account and go to View API Keys. All right, you got to create a secret key right here. So click on that. All right, create a new key. Give it a name, like it says, my test key, whatever you want to call it. Hit Create Secret Key. Okay, and there it is. That's not the whole thing. It's longer than that. I'm going to delete this after I'm done with this video, so I'm not worried about you guys seeing it. But copy it here and put it in Notepad. All right, open up Notepad, paste it in there. There's your secret key. All right, we're going to need this. we got to put this inside of Access in a minute. So I'm going to slide this over to the side. All right, so here is the video that we built in the Web API video. And it literally just goes out with a Web API and gets the current date and time. And here is the code for that. Where are you? Right here, get UTC time. Let's right click definition and there's the code for that. Now this is essentially all the same framework that we need to talk to any website, but certain sites like OpenAI require that API key that you got to know that it's you. So just not everybody can use your account and, and run up charges, right? So what I like to do is I like to create a another module that has any kind of you know, private keys and stuff like that in it. Uh, mostly for, for my videos, so I don't accidentally flash my key on the screen all the time. So I'm gonna create another module. All right, and in here, I'm gonna make a uh, constant. Uh, let's make it a public constant. We'll call it my API key, and that's gonna be equal to the thing we copied earlier. All right, that is my API key. Save that module, all right, secret mod and now I don't ever have to put that on the screen again and I can put my actual real API key in there and you guys aren't gonna see it so ha 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 all right all right let's set this form up here though let's uh, I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna make this field somewhere you're gonna type in some text and then we're gonna send that text to chat GPT and see what it does with it all right so let's reformat this guy here let's get rid of that equals date get rid of that format and the name is going to be, I don't know, let's call it my text. Okay, we'll just type whatever we want in there and then we'll make a button and we'll send that to uh, OpenAI. Okay. Okay, so let's go into our code. Now, right down here, and we're going to use the Hello World click button to do all this. We can get rid of this stuff. Put some blank lines on here in the bottom. Okay. All right, now we've got our API key. That's all set. So we're gonna need that in a few minutes. That's already set as a global constant. We need two more constants and I'm just gonna copy and paste them instead of typing them in again. There they are. There's the URL and this is where we're sending the stuff to. It's openai.com slash v1 slash chat slash completions. That's just the, that's the URL they've set up for their API, okay? Now the model there are, there are many different types of GPT models, all right? 3.5 is their older one, but it's faster and it's a, lot, it's a lot cheaper. It's like fractions of a penny per query versus the newer version 4.0 model, which is, you know, has, it's a little more complex, it's a little smarter. But I think for your average everyday usage, the GPT 3.5 turbo model is just fine. If you wanna change that, go look at their documentation. They've got tons and tons of documentation on their website. What I'm doing for you right now is I'm distilling my weeks of reading about this stuff into a short video so you can get working with it. But there's all kinds of different options and stuff you can change. All right, now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go over here to this get time mod, the one that we made from the last one. I'm just gonna copy this stuff because we're gonna use most of this. But instead of putting it in a module over there, just, just for now, I'm gonna drop it in here. Okay, because we're gonna need a lot of the same stuff. We need the XML HTTP object. Obviously, that's what we use to send and, and receive this stuff. All right, my response text is what you're getting back. My URL we've got up here is URL. So let's, in fact, let's just change this to my URL and then we can get rid of this guy. Okay. And we don't need that. Okay. Now, in the last video, we used the get method of getting information. Get essentially, there's two, there's two kinds of methods for sending and receiving information over, over the web like this. There's get, which basically sends it all as if you were typing it in the query string and at top of your web browser, right? This thing, let me show you, right? This thing here, it's essentially if you were saying like 599cd.com slash test, 
you know, uh, question mark, you know, name equals Richard and uh, phone equals blah, 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 right, right? This is what's called the query string right there. Okay, and get is essentially using that query string. The alternative is something called post and post is like what forms do when you fill out a form on the web and you hit the submit button that gets posted as a form. So we have to change the way we're sending and receiving data just a little bit. So instead of using get, we're going to put post in here. So we're posting it like a form. Okay. And then one more thing I'm going to add is some timeouts. And then we have to set the content type and the authorization. All right, these are timeouts. This is how long it takes to resolve, connect, send, and receive data. So that if it, it, and these are milliseconds. So if it takes more than five seconds to resolve, five seconds to connect, 15 seconds to send the data, 15 seconds to receive the data, it will time out and it won't just lock your application. The application access won't just sit there waiting for stuff. Okay. Okay, that's it for today, folks. Stay tuned for part two. Today's Friday the 20th, so part two will be released on Monday the 23rd on my YouTube channel, or members can watch it right now on my website. There's the link right there. All right, so same bad time, same bad channel. I'll see you on Monday. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. 
We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.